Flashback of Montana was over. <laughs> and now Lane was back with Mertes, falling through the sacred tree of life and being dropped somewhere in prehistoric Ireland. It was like how weird it is to realize she had complete control of her life and got to decide for herself where she wanted to go without knowing how it was going to come to pass. It had been that way all along, like how she had turned herself into a sheep in the beginning and was now everything besides. It was a story she'd made up herself which had transformed her. She already knew that her next mission was to help Kakolin in the cattle raid of Cooley, where Kakolin was actually Max her past one night stand turned into someone she'd fallen in love with. And this was the second part of her healing journey. It represented her way into empowerment, the empowerment that seemed impossible, but which she was sure to find. Eat this, Merti said, dropping down on her something small. Lane caught one of the pomegranate seeds in her mouth and felt herself being carried away to the land of her ancestors, even though she was just an American and could not say she was Irish. Besides being in a tree at that moment, Mertes was also a Reiki ASMR artist on YouTube, and Lane was propped up in her bed with her laptop in the new life she had in Boston. In Boston, she was building her dreams from the ground up, writing them as she was living them, like a giant oak grows from a seed. Mertes was moving her hands in and out of Lane's field of vision, holding the amber stone, which had multiplied in size. Lane felt so calm now, getting sleepier. Amber, trapped in air, trapped bugs. She was a bug floating in a stream of golden liquid, letting go of consciousness, letting go of fear. It was as easy as turning off the light. Lane relaxed her shoulders and flowed in the dream within the dream. On the way down through the tree, she saw the old maps, only understood by dreamers of dreams, of the Corlea Trackway, the royal seat of Terra, Emain Maka, the gates of Ulster, and what she thought was the heart of her ancestral land. She fell onto solid ground then, well, sort of. She looked around her for a long time after having landed in this new place. She was in Boston now as well as Ireland. How could one be in two places at once? One of her magical qualities was the gift of bilocation. At Lane's feet was a creek bed full of river rocks. She looked around her wondering what the Montana equivalent of this place would be. Maybe the Bitterroot River near where they used to take the kids to wade in the shallow park. With the bridge over them and there was the fence line up the mountain above her covered by trees. It was made of stone. Everything was so green and lush, a lot like the park near where she lived in Boston with a duck pond nearby. She put on fake nails she bought from the dollar store. Even though she was writing about her past, she did feel a new phase of her life, riding on the wings of what she had never known or experienced. It made every fiber of her being love the rough trail she'd walked to get here. In her new life, there was a creek bed next to her and the robin and the blackbird flitted in and out of coral reeds of sunshine. One did a dance on the water, not knowing anyone was watching. A bee landed on the sheet that covered her thigh and she felt it buzzing in her hand as she quickly moved it away without getting stung. 
It seemed like it knew its time was running out, and it was scared with the coming of winter. It is a Scottish belief that when the soul leaves the body in dreaming, it is taken by a swarm of bees. So, that's what must have happened to her. The bees pollinated the flowers, made her a new woman, and brought her to a new place. Actually, she'd been in Boston almost two years now in her apartment. Lane listened to a lecture on Zoom by a scientist on climate change. He said what we know as seasons wouldn't be the way they are now. And with the seasons, a lot of what we know of our culture and identity would die away too. But for now, it was very much becoming winter. They were giving her hell at work. They rolled their eyes when she came into the theater and seemed to be spreading some story about her. She didn't know what about. She wondered if anyone else felt like they couldn't catch a break. Yet, if it was her belief that men and women, and women and women, could coexist together, isn't that what she had to stand on? no matter how challenging things became. Lane put the torque that resembled a serpent's head around her neck. It had fallen out with the rest of the debris Mertes had thrown after her. Maybe the greatest gift was just having an opportunity at this fresh start. Yet it seemed most of the adornments Mertes had spoken about, which Lane half yearned for and half feared, would have to be burrowed away for some time in the future. Her garden was a messy one. It had a few wild flowers growing here and there. All she knew was she must always maintain it. Even if the money did come trickling in from her work, as she hoped it would one day, it seemed like things were coming more into balance and there was new life emerging and experiences to be had like a life unbalanced was now a life unfolding in perfect bloom in its own time. Among the bees on the creek side, a huge monarch butterfly landed on a flower. She moved over to some bushes near the creek and used berry juice to dye her eyebrows and a herb called ruum to redden her cheeks, lips, and fingernails because she was finally listening to Merti's advice to adorn herself more. It flew over her head and disappeared somewhere behind her. She thought about how Queen Elizabeth had just passed away, because the butterfly was also a signifier of keeping the faith and solidarity in one's beliefs. According to the Milner Dream Guide, a monarch butterfly would attempt the migration Butterflies take several generations to complete a migration from Mexico and back, and although many of them don't live to complete the journey, they somehow know that this migration is crucial to their evolution. And there is said to be a super generation who makes the whole trip and back without being picked off by predators. If you can make it here, she told herself, you can make it there. And she was talking about Italy. But she knew by now it was more about the journey than the destination. On hard days, however, looking up dream and animal symbolism gave her hope and comfort. Thanks for watching my video, guys. I'll be back with another video next Wednesday. Till then, ciao!